Well, it's not just a big day for Marcus Willis. It's a huge day for everybody associated with his camp. Here's Matt Smith, who's been coaching him for three years. Matt, this must be a crazy ride for you as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Um, yeah, well, I, I think the results haven't been that surprising. Um, but obviously, playing Federer and the, uh, the experience, that is quite surreal, yeah. What was it about this campaign, the fact that he came through the six qualifying rounds? What, what's clicked in the last couple of months? Um, I just think, I think mentally he's in, a, he's in quite a good place. Um, I, don't, I don't see an awful lot of difference tennis-wise. Um, I think he won those six matches because he was the better player on the day. Um, for two of them, I think he, he, ranking-wise, you know, they, were, they were good players, Skeeter and Barankis. You know, but the others, I felt, he's probably easy, easy, easy um, level, maybe even favourite for those matches. And what about, you know, we've, we've seen all the jokes. I mean, he's captured the public's imagination, all the jokes about, yeah, I used to be a bit of a fat boy. Was it a case that he decided, right, I've actually got to focus on this because I, I, know, I know I've got the talent. I've just got to get the body in the position where I can, where I can show everybody. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was very, um, again, when we, when we first started together, that was one of the main things we wrote down. Um, but we did it in a way that, wasn't, that it hadn't been done in the past. A lot of people have told him you're overweight. And then that's it, left it. Uh, we said, OK, you're probably not in the right shape, but this is what we're going to do, this is how we're going to do it. This is how it's going to affect you, this is how it's going to affect you mentally. And we prepared him for it. And I never actually asked him what he weighed. Um, the, 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 the thing we did was I, I got told every week how much he'd lost. So when we were in that training block of I think it was like three to six months where he was really trying to lose weight, uh, he told me every, every week how much he'd lost that week. And it became like a bit of a competition for him. Kept a log, kept a diary. Um, so that's how we did it, really. We made it quite a competitive thing. And how, how crazy has life been over, over the last 48 hours? You seem like quite a relaxed figure, which, which is great for him. And I watched the two of you just interacting as if it was an, another, another day of knocking up. But things must have gone berserk. It, offers coming out of the table and it must have been crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's part of the coach's job, in my opinion. You don't, you don't have one way of coaching. You tailor it to whoever your player is. Um, that, what you've just seen out there, was a very relaxed warm-up. Um, because that's what Marcus likes, especially on a day like today. Um, but I've got other players who would want something the polar opposite of that. They'd want to be shouted at and, and we'd be on there for an hour or so sweating bullets. So you have to tailor it to what your player, what your player's personality perceives as the best way to get the results out of them. Um, that's what's best for Marcus today. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's, that's what we do. But how, how strange has it been to, to be on that? I mean, it was, it was front page news mm. you know, uh, on most of the British dailies. Uh, you know, did he take that all in his stride? Has, has he got a little scrapbook going of his, of his crazy <laughs> week? Yeah, he, I dare say he's got it. It's probably all online, isn't it? Um, but yeah, it, 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 it was a bit surreal. Um, Monday night when he beat Barankis, because I thought he beat Barankis, so I was, oh, wasn't that amazed when he beat him. Um, but then I was, all of a sudden the phone went crazy and to see him on the front page of the mail and stuff like that is, is a bit mad because I've known him for, for so long and uh, but that's where he, that, he's deserved to be there. He's won his matches, he's taken his opportunity and he has done the work. That's what a lot of people don't realise and this whole thing about, oh, we, you know, he came out of nowhere. It's nonsense because he was a very, very, very good player. It's only recently that his rankings dropped a little bit because he had a few injuries and he started doing some coaching to get some money in. But, you know, this time two years ago, he was 320 in the world and he looked fantastic, he looked brilliant and it just didn't quite click. It didn't quite happen at the right times. Um, but this, like, you know, he's come out of nowhere stuff. No, he's a, he's a very, very, very good player. His ranking lied. It, 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 Brankis was not playing a 772nd in the world player on Monday. He's a, he, he's a superb tennis player who just had a little run of bad luck and a, and a few little things went against him. And to, to, for him to come back from that is such a testament of his character because it, when he's had that many hits, to come back like he has, it's just it's, it's phenomenal from. OK, and, and what, what about getting him ready for centre court? What, what will yeah. you guys do in that last hour? Because I guess it's really important. There'll be an incredible reception for him, mm. but it's really important that he doesn't spend the first 10 minutes yeah, of the exactly. match going, wow, this is centre court, it's Roger Federer. Yeah, I mean, we've planned for this already. Um, I've spoke to the referee this morning and he's going to allow us to go on during the Djokovic match and just sit for 10 minutes because it's, it's all well and good. He's been on, he's walked around and we were doing it this morning. Um, but there's no one in it and I wanted him to hear the noise and feel the vibrations off the speakers and stuff like that and hear what the, the ball sounds like on the indoors so that he doesn't spend his warm-up thinking, Christ, on centre court, thinking anything we can do to dampen that effect. It's going to help, so we're going to do that and then we're going to treat it like any other match. He's got his game, game plans written down in my bag. We're going to talk it through. We're going to eat. We're going to shower. He's going to go and do it. And is he, is he quite quiet? I mean, I guess you, well, you, you don't know what he's going to be like before coming out on centre court, but when he's, 
had big matches in the past. Is he quite quiet? Does he stay relaxed? What's he like in that last 10 minutes? He's like, uh, he's like a switch. He's, he's absolutely normal. Um, this is like on Monday, for example. He's absolutely normal, warming up. He's having a joke. He's very, very relaxed, very loose. Exactly what you saw there. And then with about 10 minutes to go, he'll go a bit quiet. And we'll talk very seriously about what, what c could happen, what will happen, if things go well, if things go badly. So he's as, as prepared as he possibly can be for all different scenarios which are going to happen today. So we'll talk about him going six love down today. We'll also talk about him going to break up. So whatever happens, he, we have spoken about it, and it's not preparing you, you know, for, the, for that. But it helps, and it'll certainly put him in better stead. So that's what I imagine will happen. Um, we'll see, though. We'll, we'll see how it goes. And I guess the most important thing for, for someone who's worked so hard to, to get to this point, uh, especially coming through all those qualifying matches, is the most important thing that he just goes out and embraces every element of what the day and the challenge requires? Um, yeah, I think he does. I think he, you know, I, I, I don't sign up for this, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go and relax and have a swing when you're playing someone better than your business because he's only a bloke, you know, it's not, you're, you're always either favourite or underdog. And if you're playing someone who's supposedly better than you, you still have to beat them, you still have to treat it like any other match and you still have to find weaknesses or chinks or whatever you want to call it. You still have to find ways to get people. And okay, it's Roger Federer, you know, he's, he's a bit of a different level, but no one's ungettable. And it's, it's really important that Marcus today um, goes to war, goes out all guns blazing, whether that's pace or whether that's tactical or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and whenever Roger comes off that court, if he feels like he's had a match, and if he has won, if he's earned the win, then Marcus has done his job properly. Well, it's, it's, it's a great story and it's a great day. Thank you very much for My sparing pleasure. so much of your time. Enjoy it. It's, we are so looking forward to this. It's going to be massive. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks. very much, guys.